Smith. I'm Director of Tests for uh, Office Communicator and Design Group at Microsoft. And um, thank you for, for having me here. It's, uh, I, I haven't heard about this group before, and um, it's been very interesting. So feel free to interrupt. I'll, I'll go fairly quickly with just an overview of what some uh, couple of handouts and propaganda and stuff. Um, but I'll, I'll touch on uh, Kelly, uh, a great way of describing sort of the left brain, right brain, the way of the future. Um, and, sorry, I think my brain has a point. <laughs> 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 so, uh, the, you know, we, we run into that um, a lot where you know, our processes are very uh, well established, well thought out, but then um, we have uh, <clears throat> sort of this new generation of, of, of workers who come in with a lot more as technology has, has been more pervasive and just in society in general and certainly in education, the, uh, the level of experience and the, and the exposure to technology, the, technology the, the savviness of newer employees is much different than, than it's been in the past. And so what we end up with is uh, this sort of gap and not a, a, an underutilization just in terms of I don't have the ability to contribute with the breadth of experience that I have coming in. And so it, uh, one of the processes I use in, in sort of beginning of the project cycle is I'll go and do uh, sort of one-on-one -on -one meetings with everyone on the team. And team size is about 90 people. So it takes quite a while, but there's a, there's a pretty common uh, feeling that, hey, I have more to give. Right? I, have, I have all this experience or exposure or this way of working that is just not the, the existing way. But, and so um, this kind of mirrors sort of, I guess I jumped ahead a little bit, but the, <laughs> but the Gallup survey, um, I'm sure many of you are familiar with this, to show that, that lack of engagement or at least somewhat disengaged. And so we really want to try and tackle that and develop a program. You know, if we can look at, at the economy or society or our senior leaders and say, well, something should change out there. But the reality is that these 90 people could look at me and say the same thing. And so what was I doing? And so as we were thinking about this, we ran into a paper from a couple researchers from the University of British Columbia who had equated, in terms of job satisfaction, a 10% increase in trust in an organization to a 36% pay raise. So we decided we'd go for the 36% pay raise. That was the night, so we settled on trust. <laughs> and what we thought was, you know, a lot of the, the sort of, if you think about the sort of creative companies, the, the IDOs or Pixar's or Disney, you know, and, and the, I'm sure many of you have read the books of, oh, here's the, the behaviors to, uh, <clears throat> that you look for in an organization that would lead to creativity and things like, Freedom to fail, freedom to suggest new ways of doing things, um, change processes, things like that, um, really are rooted in trust, right? If, if, you know, it's, what happens then is, is people, you know, they don't take risks, right? And they, and they don't sort of innovate because, well, we're not rewarded for failure. So how you really need that climate of high trust to be able to fail comfortably, right? And so, um, so we, we developed this thing called 42 Projects, which is um, in deference to everybody from the Hitchhiker's Drive to the Galaxy, which is just a nerd. But if you go into your your favorite search engine and search, search for the answer to life, the universe, and everything, it'll give you the answer 42. So that's, we wanted something quirky that people could remember. But basically we have uh, three pillars here, um, that, which sort of are the circles there. Uh, basically to, to work on building trust in the organization. Um, and then the, the use of gameplay, collaborative, collaborative play, for people to experiment, to develop new relationships, and, and um, you know, have some fun. And then you know, with the hope that the combination of those things lead to more innovative efforts. And, and in our work, um, you know, we're, our job is to ensure quality. And, and what happens is, as, as our products mature, you really need new thinking, new techniques, new ideas to, to flush out the, the defects that, um, that come in new and creative ways. <laughs> and so, uh, so if people are free to try new things, then they'll flush out new laws, new laws, defects. So there's really a, a, a direct productivity impact to experimentation and risk taking. 
we've been working for a long time, and what we, what we did was very analog, I guess. And just got people in a room and just said, what are the behaviors that you feel are influence and trust in, you know, in for you? And people just wrote down the things. And so um, we saw, so the, um, this is an abbreviated version of it. So not sure what's, the, uh, but people would write down the things that they feel influence trust for them. So things like transparency and respect and, um, uh, predictability, accountability, integrity. I mean, you can imagine yourself some of the some of the things. And then we just started working on doing those things, right? And, and working and saying, okay, so respect. What does that What does that mean? There's a technique called subversion analysis where you uh, reverse the sort of the desired goal and then invent ways to create that. So we would take things like respect and take a business context and say, okay. Respect in a team meeting, and let's it, and then we flip it around and say disrespect. Okay, how would we demonstrate disrespect in a team meeting? And people love coming up with negatives for that. Um, but then you have a list of behaviors that it's amazing how quickly you sit in a meeting and you see all those behaviors. You know, um, laptops open or checking your phone in a meeting, all the, all the things that people would identify. And so we just, you know, made that uh, <clears throat> these behaviors brought them to the service and, and just talked continuously about and about the actions that people were taking, could take, and there's a um, sort of a start-stop continuum, I think some of you have heard those, that, about, that identifying the behaviors that you know, increase trust that we're not doing today and start doing those, continue doing the ones that we're already doing, and if there's things that we're doing today that are eroding trust, stop doing them. And we just did that for three years, and it was really, you know, it really was three years before you see a noticeable difference in the in the culture of the organization. Yeah, it's really you know this. I, I like this slide that you can decide to take any action today. I can, I can default to trust and say you know I'm just going to trust that that person is going to deliver. And and if everyone or you know, people start to make those assumptions, that eventually becomes the culture of the organization. And then going forward, the culture of the organization drives trust the actions like oh I would never do that in this world so um, that persistence over time was a very important thing and, and you know that the, the measurement we have is sort of laughter in the hallways right that if, if you know if there's laughter in the hallways it means a people are showing up it's a good start and that they're having fun and enjoying what they do and if, if we make the assumption that we're hiring the right talents and the right people if they're doing enjoying the work that they do then they you know are more productive and going to be better at it and that's what we saw. And so um, the, we have an annual employee survey and has many questions, but the one that I use as a proxy for trust in the organization is this, I feel encouraged to try new and better ways of doing things. And over this three year period, we went from a rating of about 69% favorable up to 97% favorable. And so the, uh, you know, the thinking is, okay, if there's any other, the other questions that are negative, well, people are now empowered to try new ways to, to address those other things as well. Um, but really what we saw was we saw customer satisfaction and we saw our productivity go up. And so there's many studies that show that uh, employee satisfaction is a, is a precursor, a predictor of customer satisfaction. You know, if employees are happy, they're going to do better work, they're going to serve the customers better. Customers then in turn are going to buy more, so the customer satisfaction is a predictor for your shareholder. Um, or executive board, I guess, whatever the nonprofit equivalent of that. But but if in an organization you can make the employees happy, it it ripples its way out to sort of